If you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of Acts. So we're in a season of Pentecost. In fact, from here on out, from the day of Pentecost that we celebrated last, or Pentecost Sunday, last Sunday, um, this is, you know, the, the church refers to, at least on a church calendar perspective, uh, all the way up to Advent, it'll be the second Sunday after Pentecost, the third Sunday after Pentecost. And the reason for that is the, is the central role that the Holy Spirit plays in the life of the church. Um, when you look at the book of Luke chapter 10, the parable of the Good Samaritan that, that you know, the Samaritan brought the person who was wounded, brought him to the inn and left him in care of the innkeeper. And the innkeeper is, is uh, in, in that story is the Holy Spirit. Aren't you thankful that we're in the care of the Holy Spirit? We're not left as orphans. We're not out here by ourselves. Uh, I'm so thankful that Jesus um, expressed to us that um, he wasn't going to leave us as orphans. And, and I just want us to go to the book of Acts chapter 1. We're going to pick up at the first, first part of that chapter, and we're going to get down to verse 8 or 9, if that's all right. In the first book, who wrote Acts, by the way? Just a little bit of trivia. No one on the front row can answer. Who wrote the book of Acts? Luke, good. So in the first book, what book is that he referring to? The gospel of Luke, right? The gospel, I think it says in your Bible, the gospel according to St. Luke. He's writing to a guy by the name of Theophilus and he said, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive uh, to them by many infallible or convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. So what we don't have is we don't have those 40 days. We don't have those 40 days of recording, right? So for 40 days, he taught the, the apostles and spoke to them about the kingdom of God, gave them insight. I, I would love to have a book of all of that. I would love to have been a mouse in the corner in all of those meetings that he had, right? It had been pretty special. Um, while staying with them, he ordered them to not leave Jerusalem, but to wait there. King James Version, I think, thinks it uses the old word that we don't hear very much anymore, tarry, right? To tarry there for the promise of the Father. Everybody say the promise of the Father. <laughs> so if the Father promised you something, you'd be looking forward to it, right? Especially if your Father is God, right? This, he said, is what you've heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. How many days did it turn out to be? So for 40 days, he appeared to them. 40 days, he ascended up to heaven. And the day of Pentecost is 50 days. <laughs> 50 minus 40 <laughs> is 10 Turn to your neighbor and say, 10. Okay, so not many days hence, this is all going to take place. Well, we, we now, of course, then, real time, they didn't know. They didn't know that there was going to be in the church world this celebration of the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out. But we know it to be 10. So when they had come together... And they were all together, so this is, this is my lame joke, but um, the official dealership for cars in heaven is a Honda. Because it says in the King James Version, they were all with one accord. Oh. It's lame, I get it. But some of you have your Wranglers on way too tight, and you just need to loosen them a little bit. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you'll restore the kingdom to Israel? I find it interesting. It has nothing to do with this sermon, but 
I find it interesting that still at day 40, they're still perplexed about this whole thing, right? I, I kind of think they're still in the aftershocks of crucifixion. Oops, he's risen from the dead. Now he's been with us for 40 days and he's teaching us about the kingdom of heaven. And then, he, then he's, I can just see a collective rolling of the apostles' eyes when he talks about not many days hence, you know, you're going to be baptized. And I, I could just see that collective rolling of their eyes. It's like, what is he talking about now? Why does he speak in this code language that we don't fully get, right? Lord, is this the time then that you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it's not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set uh, by his own authority. But... You will receive power. Everybody say power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will, be witness, you will be my witnesses. Remember, last week, witnesses is the Greek word martyrios. You'll be my martyrs, right? In Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And then when he said this, he ascended up on high. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that you promised not only in sending your Holy Spirit, Lord, uh, that promise, uh, obviously you've honored that, and here we are now 2,000 years later. And Father, as humans, we are above all so privileged to live in a time of where you've come to dwell in the hearts of men. God, we thank you. Teach us today. Minister to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Telling the disciples you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. I wonder what, I wonder what real time, I wonder what they thought that meant. I wonder, so we know that power in the Greek is the Greek word dunamis, which we get our English word dynamite, right? So would your brain just go, man, we got to blow things up? <laughs> Maybe turn things right up? I, I, I don't know. But it's interesting when you, when you talk to people about the word power, it's interesting what, how some people interpret that word. For some, it is, there's a new sheriff in town, and things are going to be done differently in the whole nine yards. For some, it's lightning from heaven. It is fireworks. It is pointing your finger in what, whatever it may be. For others, it's a, it's a quietness. Have you ever played somebody in sports? I don't know if he's here today, Con Anist. In Con's younger years, and in my younger years, I played pickle, uh, not pickleball. Um, oh, I love pickleball. Rackable. Con was wicked to play with. I mean, just absolutely wicked to play with. And he had a power that he displayed completely differently. Never said a word, but if he felt like you had you on your heels, no backing off, he would just bury you. And then just look at you and smile. Having fun? And he would just, just proceed to bury you. There was no let up. There was, there was only turning it up. And I, I could say that he was a powerful racquetball player, but you would never hear it and you would never see it. He just did it. We've watched other people that are all of that. In fact, there's a couple of my daughters that they display their power differently when it comes to sports. One would display, if somebody would challenge them in something, they would just kind of look at you and smile. And me as a dad, knowing my child, it's like, uh-oh, you just uncorked something that you don't know was in there. But she would never let you know it. But then she would just come out and just, I mean, Katie bar the door. The other one was challenge her. It's fine. Let's do it right now. <laughs> and, and it was like, it was like she was vocal and demonstrative in her power. So for you, what do you think about when you think of the power of the Holy Spirit? Depending probably upon your religious tradition, if you grew up in a religious tradition, you would probably interpret that word differently. 
right? De- depending upon what that tradition was, it's like, you know, religious traditions, it's interesting. You can tell a little bit about their eth- ethos. Some religious traditions go on a retreat while others go on an, an advance. What is it? But this word power, let me read you all of the, at least, people that are way smarter than me. Let me, let me read you the definition as listed in a Strong's Concordance. Dunamis means force. This force could be literal or it could be figurative, right? So you could see it or maybe you couldn't see it. Or maybe it was just more philosophical. It could be miraculous power, usually by implication, an ability, an abundance, might, mighty works, miracle power, or just power, strength, (laughs) violence, or a wonderful work. So I think what you get by the word, at least all those things, it begins to give you an idea that maybe it's broader than maybe we might just focus in on, right? Some traditions, you know, or whatever, or just some people, they think that if we're going to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, that lightning's going to come out of your finger and you can just point to this, point to that and whatever, and poof, things are going to happen, right? It could be that. Or it's all about miracles, that if it's not miraculous, it's not Holy Spirit. My question would be, does every situation require a miracle? By the strict definition of the word miracle, I would say no. A miracle is what? An aberration or an elevation of or a superseding of natural things, right? Judged upon that... If I need to answer a question or know how I need to discipline my three-year-old child, it might not be miraculous. (laughs) Then again, it might. (laughs) Are you with me? Not all situations require miraculous. Not all situations require power. But here's what we know for sure. And the things that I want to encourage us in, and I want to challenge you in a bit, and I want to hope, hope inspire maybe for you to just get this idea that that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit where God has come to dwell in the heart of man. Jesus prophesied in John. He said, the Holy Spirit has been with you, but he will be in you. That's That's a game changer. In fact, until the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, guys, when he came, not when it came, when he came, the third person of the Trinity, in other words, if I could say it this way, hits center stage in the universe. When he comes, humanity for the first time ever had the God of the universe dwelling on the inside. Can you just imagine? Let me just ask a question. Have you taken that for granted? I have. I think we all have. If you're a Christian, you've taken for granted the fact that the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, God himself dwells on the inside of you. How special is that? All the patriarchs of old, Noah, Moses, all of them, David, Isaiah, Jeremiah, run down through the list, Amos, Obadiah, Zechariah, Haggai, all the other weird names. <laughs> Men of God, women of God would have dreamed, would have given their right arm to live in our age of where the God of the universe has come to dwell on the inside. Think about that. You shall receive power. Can I, can I just flesh that out with some subtext? A force, an ability that dwells on the inside of you so that you're never left clueless or without something. Guys, that's amazing. That's amazing. That tells me that this power, this force, this 
however, you know, we could say that anytime God deals with us, we, we could say maybe in one sense with a broader definition of miraculous that it's miraculous. But, you know, human beings are the only of God's living creatures that can connect with the natural world and the spiritual world. And that the God of the universe can communicate with us and, and give us, an, I mean, think about it. So, you know, I was, I, if you watch uh, whatever news you watch, your anchor, whoever's sitting at the table, whatever, they have, a, they have a earbud in their ear. And what they're listening to is they're listening to a producer that's telling them what they need to do, right? They're, they're a producer, and especially if it's in a if it's in a, maybe a volatile situation that they need to break into a certain story, that their earbud is the deal. Think, now think about that. The person that's producing that show is orchestrating the whole thing. And they have insight beyond their just natural things. I believe that's something similar to us going through life. That we've got God on the other end of the mic and we listen with our knower and he tells us what we need to do. He gives us insight in what we need to do. What does that look like? Well, if you've listened to preachers from the pulpit talk, you'll, you'll maybe get a distorted picture because we'll use words like this. You know, I just felt like the Lord spoke to me, right? So when you hear that, when you hear the word spoke, what do you think? You think audio, right? I'll just say this, um, probably 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not about audio. It's, an, it's not God audibly speaking, um, but it is about nudging. Y'all know what nudging is, right? Every husband knows what a nudge is. <laughs> Happens much during church, <laughs> And the preacher makes a statement and they get nudged. It's like, no. It could be that you're at a restaurant with a couple or something like that sitting there and the, the topic of discussion at the table starts to go one way and you start to answer and you get nudged. That's where the wife reaches over, grabs your thigh and pinches. And you know that you shouldn't go there any further and change the topic. Whatever, it, are you with me? Kids know what nudging is, right? Kids are over at a, at a place, they're visiting somebody, they're in a deal, and they're getting ready to put their hands on a, on a lead glass vase or whatever, and mom nudges them, uh-uh. They get nudged. The Holy Spirit, because he lives on the inside of us, if we have our earbuds in, is that correct? Ear, uh, earbuds, whatever. Earphones, whatever. And if we have them turned on, and if we'll listen, we probably won't ever hear, maybe, we might, God can do whatever, but we probably most likely won't hear the audible voice of the God. I have breaking news, Lynn, do this. Okay, that may happen. But for sure what we have is in our knower. Where's your knower? We're a tripart being. We, we're a spirit, we have a soul, we live in a body. Your knower is your spirit. Some people don't know how always to articulate that. And so they'll say things like this. You know, I just, something just told me. First of all, I'd like to know how you spell something. <laughs> right? I hear this a lot with people. That, you know, I was, I was driving down this road and, and then something just told me to to turn, and I turned, and then, you know, you might find out later that there was an accident or something like that. For the Christian, how many of you know that something is a someone whose name is the Holy Spirit? So the issue is, is how do we get tuned in to the Holy Spirit? How do we tune ourselves in to where we can hear those nudgings? sense those nudgings, whatever. First of all, you got to be tuned in. Yeah. Yay or nay? Yeah. I mean, you, you can't hear unless something's on. So our heart, that connection, and that's not what this is about, but I encourage you that connection takes place in mundane things. The mundane things of prayer, 
the mundane things of reading the Bible every, you know, Pastor Alex shared something with all of us this morning before church started at 8.30. He shared with us that rarely uh, do we find, but we as people, we're looking for the new, we're looking for the thing that has new, new, new whiz bangs and whatever. We look to the new fad, we look to the new whatever. And you know what? Usually the things of God, it's, it's never found there. It's, it's in things like praying you mean I have to spend time with God every day? Yep. You mean every day? Yeah, if you want to be tuned in. Well, can I read a different version, you know, the Bible? It's like, how many times do you expect me to read the Bible in my lifetime? Well, I don't know, but you got to read it every day. You mean every day? I'm tired of it. Oh, well, the magic's found. The beauty's found in the mundane. But I'll just tell you, I leaned over when, when Pastor Alex said that, I leaned over to Lee and I said, that's the hardest part of Christianity is we look to the new, we look to the whatever, we want it to have bells and whistles, we want it to jump higher, we want it to, to be louder. But you know what? It's in, it's in those day and day living of things that we know to do that gets us plugged in and tuned in to God. But once you are, Man, I'm going I'm to encourage you. There's never a moment. If the Spirit of God has come to dwell in the, sight of, in the hearts of men and women, and he's chosen to make us his temple, that means by definition, there's never a moment in time that I'm left by myself to just my own wisdom. What does it look like practically? I, I, I shared... I shared a couple stories in the first service that I'll, I'll never forget when, my, when one of my children, uh, it was right preteen, but it was a moment that my child asked a question that was a deep spiritual question. And after I pushed my jaw back up, all she saw was dad that had a smile on her face, but she asked a question that I knew instantly by the Spirit of God that instantly how I answer this will determine whether ever I ever get to hear another question and will determine her spiritual trajectory in, trajectory in life. So the pressure was on. So this seemed like for me minutes. It was seconds. I just remember thinking because Jesus said this to the disciples, one of the powers that the Holy Spirit gives us is the ability that when we need to speak on the spur of the moment, that he can mic into our knower what we need to say. Luke 12, 12, Mark 13, 11. The Holy Spirit will teach you in whatever, in whatever hour the very thing that you ought to say. When they arrest you, deliver you up. Don't worry beforehand. Don't premeditate what you'll speak. But whatever is given to you in that hour, speak that. For that is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. So think about that. When you're faced with the decision that you don't know the natural answer to, or there's 15 answers, there's 10 ways to skin that cat. <coughs> How many of you know God, through the power of his Holy Spirit, will give you the exact right answer in the time. And I'll, just, I'll never forget that con conversation. It lasted about 20 minutes. Her initial question, I'm telling you what, just almost took my breath away because it was so profound. And it's like, okay, I just remember that. Now, what she's looking at is dad. I'm looking at her and I've got a smile on my face, but inside my computer is going a thousand miles an hour and I'm, I'm puckered. I'm like, I better answer this one right. And when I began, and I just remember thinking, I'm so thankful, Spirit of God, that you dwell on the inside of me, so I need you now. When I opened my mouth and gave an answer, I'm telling you, if you, if you could have put that moment on pause, I would have jumped out of my skin and went, where in the world did you think of that? Because you're just not smart enough to think of that. And, and not only are you not smart enough, but you're, you're not contextually aware of the moment enough. And you know what? Guess what? To this day, we can have 
deep questions. And the, the spiritual trajectory of, of her life, ah, my God has become her God, and she loves Jesus with all of her heart. Where did that come from? Spirit of God. He'll give us those things. He'll give us insight. But we got to get, we, we got to get, uh, how do I want to say it? We've got to get familiar and familiarity with the Holy Spirit's nudging in our life comes by what? Trial and error. Are you with me? My wife, <clears throat> um, she just astounds me, but we've, we've endeavored to live as a couple of Lord wherever we are. See, I think Christianity really finds its, its greatness in the public square. Right, because in here, typically most people love the Lord, and so typically we're going to say amen similar at the same time, right? There you go. We're going to sing songs because we have the words up on the, on the screen, and we kind of know the melody, so we're going to do that. And we're, but, but, but when we get out of here and we go out into the world, that's the magic of Christianity. And Dret and I have watched her do it a thousand times. I, and sometimes it's just embarrassed the fire out of me. And then I feel convicted because I felt embarrassed. But we'll be in a line somewhere, um, Costco or some store. And I'll be in line and I can just look at Durette. And after a while, you just kind of guess like, okay, this is a Holy Spirit moment here. Durette will lean over to the person that's checking her out and just, just said, you know, honey, how are you doing today? I just, I just kind of feel like there's something I need to pray for you about that something happened this week. They'll just break down and just go, how did you know? And God will show up. It won't be lightning, but it's that power of the Holy Spirit that enters the moment. And we'll pray. I, I, I was sharing, <laughs> I was in a true value not long ago. I already found what I needed, and anybody that knows me, it's like I hunt, I don't shop. Are you with me? I know what my query is, I go get it and I leave, right? <laughs> I got it, but I saw out of the corner of my eye, I saw a gentleman that I did not know, didn't have a clue who he was, walk around a thing, and I just instantly inside, I went, oh, there's a nudging, okay. What do I do? I've got a time schedule, <laughs> right? And all of us have allowed distractions to come in to where we disobey. Are you with me? And I, I just say, whenever you disobey, if you disobey, repent of it and then go on and say, I'm going to do it next time. I'm going to get it right next time. Are you with me? Anyhow, I went to, anybody that knows aviation, I went into a holding pattern because I had everything that I needed. There was no reason for me to stick around in true value, but I walked every stinking aisle. Because there was something, there was a nudging that the Spirit of God had in me. And then after a while, the Holy Spirit said, okay, go, go just touch base with him. I had no clue. I, ha I just had no clue. I don't know this guy. And, you know, I know that you guys see me up here and you probably think I'm just the most outgoing person and go introduce myself to somebody. That is not me. That is not me. I'm, that's direct, but that's not me. But guess what? If I want to be led by the Spirit of God, and if I want to operate in that power, that force, that may or may not ever be seen, you know what? So, okay. I walked every aisle. I walked around his aisle, and he was in the plumbing section. So I just stood with him, and I started fiddling with plumbing stuff. I didn't need any. And I went, oh, we got a plumbing problem. He goes, that's the least of my worries. He said, yeah, I do, but boy... I wish that's all it was. Well, that just opened up into a conversation to just talk about how life was falling apart, sickness and all sorts of stuff. And I said, you know, well, the reason, sir, that I stuck around here is because I just feel like that I just want to touch base with you. And Can we pray? Well, he's crying. I'm thrilled that I didn't miss it. <laughs> Are you with me? But here's, here's what, I, what I used to say, and I want to encourage you in. A lot of times, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll hear somebody talk about that, and then, then on the inside, it's like, man, I wish God would do that with me. It's like, I'm just going to tell you something. 
you just sometimes it's trial and error. You just got to step out. And after a while, you'll find that you'll be able to clue in to those things. And it's like, you'll know that that's the Lord. And then you'll be able to step through with it and just do whatever. And I just look at it this way. If I missed that, if there wasn't a holy moment, if it wasn't sacred, if it was just my head, you know what? I just met somebody and nobody's worse for the wear. It's all okay, right? But I'm so thankful that the Spirit of God can direct us. The Spirit of God can show us things to come. Luke 2.26 said it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. The Spirit of God can show us things. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about that you're going to become a prophetic seer and you then spout your stuff on Facebook of the upcoming whatever. But I do believe that the Spirit of the Lord can show you things that when your kids enter school or your kids go someplace, that the Spirit of God can maybe, as a parent, can just say, hey, you need to support them in this area. Are you with me? Is that miraculous? Maybe not in the sense of defying natural laws, but certainly it's miraculous in the sense that I wouldn't have known outside of the Holy Spirit speaking to me, right? In those, those times, of, I encourage you parents, when children are at home, after they're at home, don't even worry about, no, I'm kidding. But when you're raising young ones at home, I'm telling you what, that, that's, the, we should be on our knees before the Lord because the Spirit of God will direct us in how to touch those kids. Every kid has their own personality. Every kid has their own giftings. Every kid is unique and different. And I'm telling you what, if we think that we can cookie cutter it all, we're missing it, right? The Spirit of God can help us as parents to clue in. How about hearing from the Holy Spirit between you and your boss on the job? You get tasked to do something and you don't know how to do it in the natural. Or there's so many ways to do it in the natural, you don't know which one's best. Could the Holy Spirit speak to us and say, this way? Absolutely. I don't know how many times every pastor... I don't know how many times I've, I've said at the bedside of tragic situations of people dying in a hospital or sitting in, in somebody's couch at their home because now I'm getting ready to plan the funeral for something that nobody expected. I don't know how many times I've been asked a question that in the natural my brain goes, there is no answer for that question. And you just depend on the Holy Spirit of God and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. And you get through it and you think you were an utter failure and only to have a person go, you know what, pastor, when I ask that question, you know, you hear it sometimes weeks later, when I ask that question and what you said, it was just like the Lord himself was speaking to me and you're just like, wow. Thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're not left alone. And I just want to encourage you, if, that, if that's something, if that's something that is, I, I don't know, <clears throat> I don't know if new to you, but if that's something that maybe you think, I had somebody in between the two services just come up to me and said, Pastor, I, I just, I, I just when, when you talked about those nudgings, I realized that I've had some things that were on the inside of me that I just ignored. And now what you just told me is to act out on those things. Amen? I mean, you know, don't be, don't be wacky and stupid. But at the same time, follow through. And what you're going to find, you're going to find it's like, ooh. Because when I speak with, you know, Leah's our fourth daughter. I speak to Leah with the same voice that I speak to our third daughter. And our second daughter, and our first daughter. Yes, I have swum in a sea of estrogen for years. <laughs> Anyhow. But guess what? I speak to her a bit different than I do my others. Right? It's, it's not because any of the others are better than. It's just that I know her. I know that if I go a certain direction with something, I may open her up or shut her off. Are you with me? The Spirit of God knows you better than anybody else. And what'll happen is after a while, when you act upon some of those nudgings, some of those, 
Nudging is the only word I can think of. When you act on some of those nudgings, <laughs> trying to think of a different word and I can't. After a while, you'll recognize that's how God speaks to you. Are you with me? And then your confidence will grow to where you'll know, yeah, that's, that's the Lord. That's the Lord. And, and step through and, you know, at the end of the day, maybe God can use you to bring absolute change in different situations. Amen? In showing things to come, I just want to encourage you. The Holy Spirit of God can give us insight into maybe things that we need to put in place in our own individual lives or in the lives of our family. I expect, I, t I tell you what, I, I don't sit and just... I don't sit and just hope that God counts me worthy to use me. Do you know what I mean by that? The Spirit of God indwells me. And so there's a, there's no, there, there, there never should be an arrogance. But, there sh but I think there can be a confidence that says, Lord, in situations, I know you're there. And I know you're going to direct. And I know that you're going to uphold. And you're going to support and whatever it may be. That gives me confidence that when life brings us those things that we never expected, that we can navigate it well. Amen? It, we, we don't have to be that train. Somebody gave a visual once in a, in a staff meeting, that visual of a train jumping a, jumping a canyon and getting on the other side and all the wheels and everything falls off, but we made it to the other side. I don't want to go through life like that. How about you? I want to be able to jump whatever canyon need, need, need to jump or do whatever we need to do and then just keep right on going. So there's a confidence, I think, that we can walk in that's not based upon pride. It's not based upon arrogance, but it's simply based upon the fact that Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will indwell you. And if he indwells me, then he's there. I don't, I don't, need, to, I don't need to ask God. I, I, you know, I don't need to have this, um, uh, what do I want to say? I don't need to have this hesitant thing that says, God, I don't know. But if you, uh-uh. The Spirit of God dwells on the inside of us, and because of that, there's a power, there's a force, there's an ability, there's a wonder, there's whatever that's available. For what? I just look at it this way. For whatever situation we may find ourselves in in, in life and where we need Him. He's there. Amen? Cool. Let's bow our head and close our eyes this morning. <clears throat> If you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, that's the first place to start. I'm going to tell you what. Pre-Christ and after Christ, life will be completely different. Completely new, but completely different because you'll have the God of the universe dwelling on the inside of you. And if you've never, if you've never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, I'd encourage you to do it today. Or if you've been away from home, and what I mean by that is if you've been navigating life without the Lord being the center of your world. You haven't rejected God in that sense that I, I don't want you anymore. Get out of my life. But, but by the way you've lived, you would go, you know what? Wow. He's no longer the center of, the, center of my world. I encourage you to put him back in the center of your life. And I'll tell you what, you can pick up from where you left off and just keep on going. Anybody that's maybe watching on screen that find yourself in that same spot, I would encourage you as well, if that's you, stick with us. What I'm going to ask for in a moment is for a response. And, and the response just simply be an acknowledgement by lifting your hand. You say, I'm not a Christian. Or you would say, I want to get back on track with my relationship with God. I'm going to have us all stand and lead us in a prayer. And I'll tell you what, things can totally change for you. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, is there anyone here this morning that would lift your hand and say, I'm not a Christian, I want to become one, or you would say, I need to get back on, my tr uh, on track in my relationship with the Lord. Would you just lift your hand anywhere across this, this room this morning? I see that there. Thank you. Anyone else, by lifting your hand, you say, pray for me. Okay, over there. Thank you. Yep. Praise the Lord. 
If that's anyone online, we're going to pray in just a moment. So I encourage you to just stick with us and pray. Can we all stand up? Hallelujah. I just want to mention that I think maybe there's some this is a nudging that I'm going to follow through with many many times that nudging's there I just don't say anything about it but this is a nudging just to give a teaching moment I feel like there's some people out there that feel like you've you've goofed up so badly that you're just on your own you would acknowledge that the Lord loves you but he's just fed up with you and he's not going to really be actively involved in your life anymore. And I just want to tell you, that's a lie from the pit of hell. So it doesn't matter how badly you've goofed up. Maybe that's for somebody that's watching. I don't know. It doesn't matter how badly you've goofed up. We serve a God of redemption. And all it just takes is just a simple, sincere, I'm so sorry. God, forgive me. I want to continue walking with you. And I'll just tell you what. God's response will be, I thought you'd never ask. Let's keep going. Amen. So if that's somebody this morning, I'm not going to ask for anybody to acknowledge if that's you. I just, one thing I, I, I know well is I know the nudgings of the Holy Spirit. And that, I just want to encourage you. Don't believe that lie that the enemy has maybe shared with you. So let's bow our head and close our eyes. I'm going to lead us in a prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I surrender my life to you. Lord Jesus, I need you. And I want you. So would you come into my heart and live there. Forgive me of my sins and help me to live this thing called the Christian life. Lord, I thank you that your Holy Spirit indwells me so that I'm not left on my own. Lord, I thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and accepting me into your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you prayed that for the first, welcome to the family of God. If you prayed that to get back with God, I'd just say, welcome home. Now, let's just live. Let's live empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. As we get ready to celebrate communion, let me just mention the obligatory. <clears throat> you don't need to be a member of our church to celebrate communion. If you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, celebrate with us together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit meeting us here in this place. When we walked in this building, I believe that you met us here. Here as we're getting ready to celebrate communion and partaking of Christ, Lord, I thank you for your Holy Spirit to meet us here. God, I believe that things will take place just during communion. Father, there's some that may experience healing in their body. For some, Lord, hearts are broken, desperate. You massage hearts. You heal the brokenhearted. Others have been bound by destructive habits, and today those chains can be broken in the name of Jesus. But whatever, Lord, I just know this, when we come in contact with you, we're forever changed. So Lord, thank you for meeting us here. In Jesus' name, amen.